Near? I want to go back way back. Before opening night, before the compliments to the mother, <laughs> and before throwing yourself on the floor, screaming, no, no, no. <laughs> when you start writing a play, do you take this ream of paper and say, I'm going to start writing and see what happens? Or do you have a burning message to the world in you that you say, I want to write about that, that's an issue, and I know the beginning, the middle, and the end? I think it depends, like, it, it depends on the thing that I'm writing, you know, and, and uh, for me, uh, sometimes it'll be just like this idea or this image or an experience, you know. Um, um, uh, I was living in Niagara-on-the-Lake for a couple of years and I would see, um, I would always see migrant farm workers from the, Carib from the Caribbean moving around and I was like, What's it like to be a migrant farm worker in Niagara on the Lake? I know what it's like for me to live in Niagara on the Lake. Like, it's crazy. Um, you know, there's not a lot of diversity. So I, I, I don't feel like I belong here. And so I started like following around, following, <laughs> I started going to this, this grocery store on Fridays when lots of migrant farm workers would be there. And I just would like hang out. <laughs> I'd be, and I took a friend with me and we'd be like, hey, How's it going? So uh, what's it like being a migrant? Pro like we would just, and they were like, what is happening? Nobody talks to us. And we would keep going there every Friday and we'd start talking to them just because I was like, I don't understand. What's it like to be here? What's it like to, to live in this, in this area? What's it like to move back and forth with your family in one place and living in Canada for six months? And so it started as an obsession. I'm obsessed about something. Something gets really, and then I go, I want to I wanna know more about this. I want to learn about this. I want to write about this. And then eventually it will turn into, it, it might turn into a play. So that's like one example of, of how um, something starts. But it's usually an obsession. And you know, where it begins might be nowhere, might look nothing like how it ends. But it's the spark. And then from there, all this stuff kind of, gets down into a laser and gets more and more specific, I think. Do you start writing before you have coffee in the morning, or do you make the pot first? I do not drink coffee. Ah, <laughs> that's the most zen answer. <laughs> yes, it's true. No. I, I feel like it's such an interesting thing, because you're, it does have to be a burning thing, whatever it is. You need a lot of like burn to sustain the, the effort of writing a play. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is, is a burning thing. Because you're talking about a, a two year, three year commitment sometimes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> one of the hard parts of the creative process is often an original ideas come with a certain energy to them, a certain flash, a certain spark. Uh, it, it's a full body experience. When you wake up the next morning and you just have the idea, the dangerous part of it is, because it doesn't have that same spark, to still believe in the idea. Um, and that's a, that's, that's a real challenge. And the same thing with the writing process. You're not going to have that initial hit to sustain you through the whole process. Uh, so it is an act of faith that um, that idea is good, even if it doesn't the drug isn't going along with it right now. Mm -hmm. um, this is along those lines. What do you do when you have characters that are really alive in your head, but kind of a circumstance or plot that's driving them? I, so the question is what happens when you've got, the, you've got characters in your head, but not necessarily a plot or a setting for them? I like that. I feel like that's my, in all of my plays. Um, I don't know. I feel like characters are the like the main thing, and I when I near the end before I started working in television, I haven't written a play in a number of years, but I started writing in a style that I thought of as the new boringness, <laughs> and which in a good way, where I stopped trying to think of contriving things for the characters to do, and I just started to think like what would they do, and then I just started to try and write what the, what they would do, and not worry about what they should do, and I found it very freeing, and I feel like in a weird way. Although it's good to have a good, it's not that simple. It's a, 
I, it's helpful not to worry about the level of excitement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, it's, I, you know, for me, it starts with character. So I just kind of just go, there are these two people, and they have a lot to say. I don't know where they are or what's going to happen, but it's like, just let them, you know, for me anyway, just let them keep talking until eventually they find their way someplace. <laughs> yeah, something will, happen. something will happen. Something will happen. Yeah, or not. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, I often find it's someplace where you never expect it, or you know, yeah. you go, oh, hmm, that's where this, that's where this belongs. I never would have thought that. So, I kind of try. It's challenging not to prejudge yourself and decide like, oh, this doesn't have to do with this. Just throw that away. Mm -hmm. I'm just like seeing it through. Like, yeah. you know, just, okay, well, I may have to write these two characters for such and such a length of time to get here. I may have taken the long way around, but it was worth it because I got to where I needed to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm prejudiced in a, in a similar way that um, it's the characters that drive it. And, and that thing called plot is there to, to s push the characters to their limits. It's there to serve their drama the characters aren't there to serve your drama. Um, and I remember when I was teaching in New York and there were people who wanted to learn about writing. They, they wanted to know what were the 10 rules of writing a play, okay. much like the Lehman Angles School of Broadway musicals. Um, as if, if you got the formula down pat, you'll, you'll, you'll have a hit, whatever. And it is, it is a long journey. It takes a while to get to know people in a way that can be dramatic and interesting. And you may sometimes find that they aren't. You've made a mistake. Those yeah. characters yeah. don't have the momentum to be in a play. Yeah, sometimes it's true. You think it's good and then it's not. And then sometimes you think something's a good idea and it's just an idea. Yeah. And I read, and these aren't plays, but I read a book that had a lot of exciting things happen in the first 10 pages and it was so boring. <laughs> and then I started reading David Foster Wallace's book about the IRS and it was so exciting. And nothing happens, nice. but it's the same. It's exactly the same with plays. Like when you think about plays, like the the it's the it's the people living on stage together that is the exciting thing. It's always the exciting thing, and even in great plays where exciting things happen, that's the truth. Is the people together? Mm 